Now this lesson is on simple interest, also known as flat rate interest. Now it is important that you know this because sometimes they talk about flat rate interest and sometimes they say simple interest. You need to know that they're both the same thing. Now we've got some terminology. We need you to understand what interest is, principal, interest rate, and also when we talk about the number of time periods, which is n. All right, so to help you um, understand this, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about in simple interest as well as compound interest because you will later learn about compound interest. So I want you to imagine a scenario where you borrow $10,000 to buy, let's say, a car. So you could have done that with on a simple interest loan or you could have done it on a compound interest loan. In fact, you would have done it on a compound interest loan. They, they don't really do simple interest anymore. It's a very old form of interest. But we always talk about it because it's nice and simple to make calculations and it's good introduction to compound interest. Now, the money you borrowed for this car is called your principal or P. And it doesn't Whenever you work with interest, principal doesn't necessarily mean a loan. It can also be an investment. You, rather than borrowing 10 grand, you could have actually invested 10 grand. All the calculations work out the same. Now, you also need an interest rate, or little r, and the interest rate is a percentage, which in this case, let's say it's 10%. That means that the bank charges you 10% interest. Or if it was an investment, you would be making 10% interest. The thing is, this is when we make our calculations, it's important to convert this into what is called, a, sorry, into a decimal. Now, 10% represents 0.1 as a decimal, and the calculation involved just means to divide it by 100, and that will convert your percentage to a decimal. Very important you do this. All right, so we've got our interest rate. We've got our principle and n represents number of time periods now we won't talk about that right now okay so let's say that you borrow 10 grand and at the end of the year the bank charges you interest right now 10% of 10 grand is a thousand dollars so at the end of the year whether it's simple interest or compound interest they're gonna charge you the same amount of interest which is 1,000 okay now your principle has now changed because you now owe the bank eleven thousand dollars which at first thought you might say well that's really bad i used to owe 10 grand now i owe 11 grand but even though it's increased in interest you made what's called a repayment and your repayment might be two grand it might be more than the interest meaning that your principal is now nine thousand dollars so you've you've paid two grand as a repayment but only one thousand of those dollars actually decreased your your loan all right so you now owe nine grand well what's going to happen next well then the next year is going to come along and they're going to charge you ten percent again now if it was compound interest when they charge you ten percent they're going to charge you 10% of your new principal, your $9,000, which would be $900, which means you now owe $9,900. Okay, so what's happened is your interest has gone from $1,000 down to $900. Your interest is decreasing, which is a good thing. But with simple interest, it's not like that. Simple interest, the interest is always calculated on the original amount you borrowed. So because you originally borrowed 10 grand, your interest remains $1,000 no matter what. So by choosing simple interest, you have lost about $100 in this case. And that is why we use compound interest today. It's a lot better. Uh, in fact, even if you owed a dollar right compound interest would have only been 10 cents 
But simple interest, because it goes on the original principle, would have been $1,000. Imagine having to pay $1,000 interest when you only owed a dollar. 